Tropical Storm Debbie has finally formed in the Gulf of Mexico. Good afternoon, this is your 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app weather update. As of the first advisory from the National Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds are 50 miles per hour. The storm is moving toward the north at 6 miles per hour. And as you can see, the forward storm motion is expected to remain slow through Monday, but it is forecast to become captured by a ridge over the central United States, which would force it toward Texas. And if it does indeed take this track, it could occur a little bit quicker than otherwise indicated. In the meantime, more immediate impacts will be felt across the Louisiana coast where tropical storm warnings are in effect for all of southeast Louisiana. So obviously tropical storm force winds cannot be ruled out. And you are also still within the cone of error, meaning that the storm center could pass as far north as coastal Louisiana. In addition to the tropical storm force winds, the greater concern will be coastal flooding. In fact, Terrebonne Parish is beginning to close floodgates in preparation for that storm surge and Grand Isle is prepping for the worst case scenario, which they consider to be four feet of storm surge at the moment. In addition to all of these things, there could also be the potential for occasionally heavy rainfall, especially if the center tracks a little bit closer to the coast than what is currently being shown, and that would amount to an excess of five to 10 inches of rainfall. The latest five-day precipitation forecast from HPC still continues to show the bullseye over the eastern Gulf of Mexico with eight to 10 inches forecast just off the Tampa coastline. But as the storm begins to move more toward the west, we will see these rainfall accumulations begin to increase out across the northwest gulf. And this is something that interests along coastal Louisiana and Texas should also be aware of. The latest visible satellite shows that while Tropical Storm Debbie has been upgraded, this is still a disorganized, minimal, and marginal tropical storm. You can see that the center of circulation is exposed with all the heaviest convection and rainfall activity still occurring fairly close to the Florida Peninsula. And you can see this even better on the enhanced infrared. The center of circulation is almost completely void of any significant shower and thunderstorm activity. And this is because of this upper level low that we see over the northwest gulf near Houston and Galveston. And you can see the southwest shear streaming straight into the center of circulation. But the reason why the hurricane center is forecasting the storm to intensify to near hurricane status within four to five days is because this upper level low is forecast to shift just enough to where the upper level conditions will become increasingly favorable over the central gulf. As you can see, the low level vorticity max has clearly intensified since last evening and the wind shear values are starting to decrease. So the upper level winds are already in the process of becoming more favorable as an upper level ridge attempts to gain more ground across the southern and eastern gulf. As to be expected for this time of the year, Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures are more than favorable for tropical cyclone development with those water temperatures being well over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see the well-known loop current even better on this tropical cyclone heat potential graphic and it looks fairly healthy out across the southeast Gulf of Mexico. And what is also very common is a gyre to split off into the western Gulf. So this is basically an extension of the loop current that extends all the way almost to the Texas coastline. So the bottom line is that the sea surface temperatures are favorable for further intensification. The following is a sea surface temperature anomaly graphic. So this does prove that Gulf of Mexico water temperatures are slightly above average, although this doesn't mean a whole lot in terms of the actual forecast for the tropical cyclone as mid to upper level atmospheric conditions are a lot more important than even sea surface temperatures. Here is a look at the latest CMC shear forecast and this is just another dynamical model that we oftentimes use. You can see the upper level ridge that is elongated from southwest to northeast from the Bay of Campeche extending into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. We still have the shear axis associated with the upper level load just to the south of Louisiana but as we turn this into the next 48 and 72 hours the upper level ridge is forecast to become much more dominant and that's why we do expect more intensification. The very reliable ECMWF model is also correctly showing the shear in place here across the Gulf, but as we go into days one all the way through four, the upper level environment becomes increasingly favorable out here over the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. This is the latest 500 millibar forecast from the European model, and as we go into 24 hours, as we also look at the sea level pressure, the storm is forecast to continue moving northward as the pressure continues to deepen, so this is going to be an intensifying tropical storm over the next day and then as we go into 48 hours or early Monday morning the steering currents will begin to break down as the influence of this eastern seaboard trough begins to decrease and the presence of this central United States Ridge begins to increase 
And as we go into Tuesday, the ridge is trying to nudge itself eastward into the lower Mississippi Valley and the Ozarks. And as long as this tropical cyclone gets caught underneath this mid-level ridge, it's going to be shunted westward into Texas. And as stated earlier in the video, if it does take this more westerly track, it could happen a little bit faster than the official forecast track is indicating. The European has this coming inland near the Texas coast, potentially as early as Wednesday evening or as late as Thursday afternoon. Now anyone that has been following my analysis over the last few days can tell you that I am not a fan of these spaghetti model plots like the one we are currently viewing, but I still wanted to show this today to represent just how much model disagreement still exists, despite the fact that we are getting closer to any type of landfall here from this storm, and we've got model tracks ranging from as far south as northern Mexico, or as far east as just south of Tampa, Florida. So everyone along the Gulf Coast, you still need to be listening to the most recent official information from the National Hurricane Center in the event that anything does suddenly change. Furthermore, just to elaborate on some of those model solutions that still take the storm toward the northeast, perhaps the more credible one is the GFS model, and oftentimes we do break down the GFS more than what we're currently showing in this particular video and that is because of the problems that we think the model is still dealing with and those are unchanged from the last two days so we're not going to go too much into the operational run but not only that as mentioned in the hurricane center discussion the GFS ensemble members which you know if the operational is considered to be a valid run you would still think that the ensembles would support that type of track and as you can see only about a third of those models are supporting the operational by taking it toward Florida whereas two-thirds are still taking it toward the Louisiana or Texas coastline so despite what you saw on that spaghetti model plot the consensus among the more reliable models is definitely in line with the idea that this will be a western Gulf land falling storm so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 28 storms you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter and we are updating our social media around the clock as this is an unfolding weather event. And feel free to respond to our videos at YouTube at any time if you have any comments or suggestions. We're open to pretty much anything. So thanks again and be safe out there along the Gulf Coast.